Hello, I'm Greg Bielman, the Surgical Director of the Total Pancreatectomy and Islet Auto Transplant Program at the University of Minnesota. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the procedure, which is also known as a TPIAT, its risks and why we can, would consider doing this for patients. The TPIAT involves removing the pancreas along with parts of the surrounding organs with reconstruction of the gastrointestinal tract. The pancreas goes to the islet cell laboratory where the islets of Langerhans are isolated from the rest of the pancreas through a several step process. The islets are important as they produce insulin and several other hormones. When the islets have been isolated, they're returned to the operating room where the surgeon transplants them into the patient, usually through the portal vein, which supplies blood and nutrients to the liver. Unlike other transplants, this transplant does not require immunosuppression since the islets are the patient's own tissue and don't cause rejection. In what kind of patients should we do this procedure? This procedure should only be considered in patients in which all other less invasive approaches to treating chronic pancreatitis have been attempted or considered. In our experience at the University of Minnesota, common problems for patients undergoing this procedure include inherited forms of pancreatitis, recurrent acute pancreatitis, and patients who have chronic pancreatitis from a variety of causes. Most patients who come to see us have reached the point in their disease where they're unable to work, they're unable to go to school, and they are frequently requiring daily narcotic pain medication to control the pain associated with their chronic pancreatitis. We consider this procedure a bit of a Hail Mary in that it's typically the final intervention attempted in patients after all other forms of non-surgical treatment have been tried and have failed. Because it's a major operation with associated risks, it should only be performed after careful consideration and consultation by a team of docs, nurses, psychologists, and most importantly, by the patient and his or her family. The risks of this procedure include death, bleeding, blood clots, and infection. This operation takes an entire day. The recovery in the hospital takes a little over a week in most cases. Recovery in the area of the operation, in our case in the Twin Cities, takes about a month, and full recovery for the patient takes six months to a year. This recovery includes the withdrawal from narcotics that almost all patients struggle with at the time of their surgery. Everyone leaves the hospital on insulin as it takes the islets about four to six weeks to begin to wake up after their transplantation. As these islets recover, about a third of our patients are completely off insulin, another half on once a day insulin, with the remainder being diabetics requiring insulin shots and checking their blood sugar several times per day. After going through this process, almost all patients report significant improvement in their pain, but most report to me that they have occasional bouts of crampy abdominal pain occurring on a weekly to monthly basis and lasting for 30 months to a day. Most of my patients would trade this pain for the daily pain that they came into the hospital with with their chronic pancreatitis to start with. Most of our patients also come completely off narcotic pain medication. What keeps me doing this big scary operation as a surgeon is the fact that most patients report to me that they are much better off after surgery with my patients typically returning to work, school, and a healthy lifestyle. Thank you for your time.